Um, I've been in ministry for 41 years. And it, even in that first year of ministry, I realized that Christmas is the most fertile season of the year. And it's the season where people are more receptive than any other month of the year. And so I think we need to seize this opportunity and do what we can to engage with people. Now, I find that resources are often the best way to engage and to connect with people. Uh, we, we've produced some of our own resources, but there are many different types of resources. Um, I know many people over the years who've sent out Christmas cards and what they've done is they've put a little booklet into the Christmas cards, just a little simple thing. Now I've done a lot of little booklets um, based on movies, um, I've done this one, Making the Christmas Connection, but there are others, other people have done them as well. That's just one little idea. I think when it comes to evangelism, the principle of reaching out to others is the same, whether it's January or whether it's February or whether it's November or December. The three main principles are to be intentional in praying, in caring and in sharing. Now, if we are intentional in praying for our friends, our family, our neighbors and our colleagues, anyway, we will discover that there is a greater receptivity. My wife and I, we pray for all the people that we know who don't know Jesus in our Jerusalem, in our Judea, we pray for them every day. So we pray for 41 people every day that the Lord will open their eyes, that the Lord will open the eyes of their hearts, that the Lord will connect with them and give us opportunities to do so. Praying, two, caring. People don't care how much we know until they know how much we care. And so during this last six months, you know, my wife has been doing the shopping for two of our neighbors every week. It's, it's a sign of tangible love, of care, of thought, so that when it comes to then engaging with the gospel, we've already been praying, we've, we've already been caring, and so sharing becomes much easier. And it's very easy to say to a neighbor or to a friend, oh, may I give you this book about Christmas? I think you'll enjoy it. You know, it's a book you can put in the loo or it's a book you can put on the coffee table, a book that you can dip into. Giving somebody a resource enables us to then pick up on the conversation about its content. And uh, there's this children's one that I've done, The Christmas Story. Um, and I know now we've got certain constraints, certain limitations, but if we can give this out to children in our communities, in our schools, uh, children at churches, uh, then it's a link in the chain in their journey of faith. Now, with people that we have had a conversation with and we want to go a little bit deeper, um, I wrote, for example, this book, Jesus Christ and the Truth, and I've offered this book. And by the way, don't think I'm just offering my books. I mean, prior to me writing books, I used to give away David Watson books, Michael Green books, uh, John Stott books, all types of books given to people. But I'll say to somebody, oh, have you ever read a book about Jesus? Most people haven't. May I give you this book about Jesus? Would you take the time to read it and then can we meet and have a coffee to discuss it or have a Zoom meeting or do a FaceTime? So that's my kind of approach to engaging with more people. I had 16 carol services this December and um, quite significant, large interchurch, citywide ones and all got cancelled. And so I thought, OK, that's fine. Right, Lord, what do you want us to do in December? And I, and I just felt this kind of epiphany. And so I'm producing a 28 minute gospel message 
that will explain what does Christmas mean? What is the gift of Christmas? And how can you receive the gift of Christmas? So a 28 minute gospel presentation of Christmas. And then I just asked a few of my friends if they would make little contributions. So I asked Matt Redman, who I, I knew when he was 13, um, to record a Christmas song, which he has, and it's brilliant. I asked David Suchet whether he would read the Christmas story, uh, which he has, and it's brilliant. And I asked Cliff Richard whether he would share what does Christmas mean to him? Uh, and he has, and it is phenomenal. I mean, he sums up the gospel in two minutes and it's amazing. So we are offering all of that free uh, to churches. Uh, we're gonna seamlessly put the whole thing together because some churches may not have the technology to do that, but then you can have them all separate and you may not want to use some things. You might just want to use the talk, that's fine. Uh, and we're offering it to churches. We, we're just calling it Share Christmas. And so far, we only told churches about it two weeks ago, uh, 461 churches have registered. And if you're interested to find out more, please just go to our website, canonjjohn.com. So I just want to encourage you, seize this fertile opportunity at Christmas. Do what you can, both in a live setting um, and in any kind of transmission that you will do, live streaming or whatever. I think we've got to adjust. We've got to cater for the flock, the fringe, and beyond the fringe. Um, do what we can and pray that God will do the rest. And let's pray that God will open up the heavens and we'll see another great awakening uh, in our nation for a time such as this.